Welcome to Insight Builder channel. Large language model automators, Python experts and my dear friends. The AI shop. Build a Django and Bootstrap app with open AI and Olama integrated endpoints. Including the streaming response. The code that I'll be sharing and I'll be discussing will be present in this particular uh, GitHub repo link. The link also will be shared with you guys in the description below. The shop. The shop is a store app that keeps track of the customers, their purchases and integrates a local and a remote LLM for analysis. This particular shop app is kind of a, a tracker which uh, which provides you an introduction on what and how you can integrate AI with your uh, data that is present. So let's go for the demo. We are at the shop right now. So you can see the home screen here and uh, we are in the home screen currently and you can see there are uh, not much of uh, things to look at, right? You don't, uh, you don't find a lot of items or uh, things to, you know, click, etc. Okay, the intention of this particular application is to provide the integration aspect of uh, the large language models, the AI models with the data that you have got. So I have removed all kinds of unwanted fills like the images and unwanted layouts, etc. Even the layout is not really perfect as you can see here. I'll be, I'm using Bootstrap and I'm trying to integrate uh, basic Bootstrap grid systems as well as uh, divs that anybody can build with least amount of effort so that's the primary intention all the code uh, as i already told is shared with you guys now let us actually dive into the ai shop so what the shop has got so first of all we can actually get a new customer so once i click on get a new customer you can see the customer it's is getting populated automatically and i can push the name push this customer's name into the database the moment i push the customer's name into the database the database gets populated. You can see already there are lots of customers in this particular database. Also, if I want, I can click on show customers. It will show the data, uh, show the customers again. And if I say remove all names, it will remove all the customers and it will say names are deleted. So now if you click on show customers, there is nothing. Now again, you can click on get new customers and you can start pushing new customers into the database. So this is one of the easiest way of populating the database you can actually improve on this and you can push a series of customers into the database that's a different uh, activity altogether but yeah right now we have three customers here and you can play with this next we have to get these customers to make some purchases so let's click on make new purchase so beverly simpson is purchasing fish and chips at price this much 19 and he's spending this much cost on such and such date and i'm going to push the item the moment i push the item the purchase is getting registered in the items database or the table and i can start getting more items like this and i can start pushing the items into the uh, database table so as you can see here as i keep on doing so new customers actually come into picture and the same customer is coming again and again so let us actually create new customers so that there will be some more things to randomize so let us uh, call for uh, yeah we can see that the new customer has uh, come into the picture and uh, let us make one more purchase uh, the victoria yeah beverly simpson that should be okay so as you can see uh, now i can actually look at the show purchase list and if i want i can remove the purchase list also it works the same way fine so this is how you populate the database or the tables next comes the interesting part i want to start the analysis by connecting to the open ai or i want to query using the olama endpoints right so i have both of these things here okay so let me click on home and the moment i click on home both the tables gets vanished so this particular page that you see here is a single page application meaning all of these things has been is getting rendered from a single html page everything is controlled using a single page i'll be sharing the details with you as we go into the code discussion let's now uh, let me actually click on show purchase just to show you the various purchases and now i'm going to ask to the to the ai that how much 
has Victoria spent till date? So this is a simple question that I am going to post to the to the AI and let us query it. The moment I send the query, you see that the prompt gets updated. It gets shown here, and you can see how much has Victoria spent till date. This is the question, right? And uh, here you can see Victoria Ramos has spent total of 312 till date. So let us actually click on Show Purchase List, and you can see Victoria Ramos here, and her total spend is 90 plus 72 plus 150. So it's almost close to whatever the answer has been uh, given. I mean, it's it's mostly correct answer also. So 90 plus 150, it is 240 plus 72, it will be 312, right? Uh, let us now look at the show questions and you can see uh, if you scroll down, there are lots of questions and you can see the answer Victoria Ramos has spent 312 till date and along with the prompt, the entire prompt along with the question. So all of these things are also stored, not just that. So this is about only uh, you know working with the questions working with the purchase items working with the customers now comes the interesting part streaming the replies so now if you want to stream the various questions that has been asked till date and you want to look at the answers you can see that it is getting streamed at the bottom this is happening purely with the help of both python uh, streaming uh, http http streaming response and java scripts http streaming HTTP request. So we will be looking into how these things work as we dive into the code. So I believe that you have got some clarity on the uh, application right now. So we can get new customers, we can uh, make new purchases, we can look at the customers, we can show the purchase list and we can delete these both customers and the purchases. We can use LLMs to query and I did not actually show you what will happen if I query Olama right now it will actually error out. I have not connected the Olama server as I am discussing on this demo. So you can see there are a couple of errors like this. So this happens if the uh, if the connection to the local server is not properly configured. It, this error occurs if I am using HTTPS link. So that is why this error occurs. I can show you, I will show you that in a couple of minutes when I explain. And you can see that the, all the questions that has been asked till date in the in this particular demo server has been updated here and you can see there is a win error that is coming up this is coming because the the local uh, olama server is not connected so you will see a connection failure attempt will come up like this and uh, so all these things we will see how the code uh, actually has happened so here is the final question that we asked today and uh, you will see the answer uh, scrolling in a second so you can see that at the bottom so 312 till date so let's go back to the uh, to the discussion right now so we saw we had done all this stuff right all the data that we saw in the demo was created using the faker library or the random uh, random uh, module inside uh, python so one, either of these things were used to populate the data that you saw that's how uh, it was working second the integration with AI endpoints are coded using olama and openai sdk all these code will be shared with you guys and explained also so stay tuned jinja templates are used to render the data in the text prompt Knowledge of Jinja templates is very, very crucial. There are two locations where the Jinja templates gets used. One is in the front end by the Django and one is in the SQL prompt, sorry, the large language model prompt creation. There also the Jinja templates are getting used, but the way it is getting used is little bit different. So we will be looking into that also. Creating and pushing the purchase, the customers, the questions are done using individual Django views. So if you go back, you saw that uh, we were uh, getting new customers, making purchases, uh, showing customers, showing purchase list, removing customers and purchase list. All these are separate Django views. And uh, even this querying that we are doing using the forms is also separate Django views that has been written, even the streaming replies. All these things we will dive into and look into it. Output of individual views are all rendered on the same template that is index.html. There are two forms as I already showed you above. And the streaming output is using streaming HTTP response in Django and XML HTTP request in JavaScript. So how these mechanisms are working, we will be diving into next. Okay. Now, 
before we dive into looking at the code and you know uh, coming up with uh, uh, understanding all the uh, mechanics it's better to understand why some decisions were made so you saw that i had done all these things right i had taken some eight seven steps so all these things uh, did not come in a single uh, sitting so it, i had to work on couple of different different ideas and uh, then i decided okay this could be the best series of steps to get the business logic to work that's the important point why these decisions are made the answer is pretty simple it is a business logic that i wanted to show you guys okay so what is a business logic just think about it let me zoom out a bit so there are lots of things happening here but the business logic is only these four steps what you see in the green okay so what are these green steps the customer visits the shop he that's what a customer does he doesn't do more than that he makes some purchases then the shop manager wants to learn about the customer's purchase and the shop mo owner wants to track the analysis these are the four major things that you want to do with the a app correct that will be the purpose right and based on these purposes rest of the blue uh, actions that you see here that is there has to be items in the shop to purchase correct that is the first thing second second the customer has to be registered in the database only after these two the customer can make a purchase yeah he can actually go and select the items but he has to first of all registered in the database and then the items that he purchases will be linked to him and then the purchase will be created so if you go back and if you look at the show customers so each of the customers has a name and a card and if you see the purchase list each of the name person's name and their item that they purchased is getting populated here so we are having a kind of a two table uh, with a single foreign key connection that's uh, working out here fine so we have seen that and also as a sub part once the customer is registered customer list must be easily accessible so that should be a view that uh, you know provides you the access to that uh, customer list correct and i same way once the items are uh, there in this case i did not actually create a database table for the items alone because the entire uh, items uh, items are created using the faker uh, library so if you guys are new to faker library just take a look at the uh, documentation of faker library it's pretty straight forward and it's very very intuitive so uh, try to work with it some of some of the examples you will understand what's going on fine now the customer makes some purchase after he purchases the data is stored in the database so this is a technical aspect and the purchase list must be easily accessible so this is what you saw in this area so once i click on show purchase list it got populated here let's go back now the shop manager wants to learn about the customer purchase so that's where the a end points comes into picture so here there is a lot of table and assume that here there are only 6 to 7 line items what if there are 90 to 100 line items or even more than that and uh, how will the shop manager or the shop owner try to analyze it so they have to run some kind of excel analysis or some kind of uh, uh, you know python analysis in the back end that's what this particular uh, this particular text box does so using the llm interaction either using the uh remote uh, either using the local llms or using the remote llms you can start asking questions and send this entire data to the large language model and get the analysis so if you scroll down if i click on show questions you can see that each prompt is having the entire data sent along with it so you can see that question is here how many line items are there and the following you will see there is a lot of data that is getting sent so this is the first customer and this is the second customer that you are seeing and this is the third customer that you are seeing so all the customer data are actually packed into a text file or a kind of a text setup and it is sent to the large language model along with the question so this is how the back end is working so we will show you i will show you how this is uh, being done in the in couple of uh, uh, minutes and then comes the answer so this is the answer that we saw fine let's go back so here you saw all this points so after once the owner or the shop manager wants to do some analysis so we have to create the prompt we have to integrate the open ai endpoint and we have to integrate the ola my endpoint correct so both of these things we have to do in order to get the reply but not just that the question asked and the replies received also needs to be stored 
so that's why you were able to get all this information and i was able to present it to you so assume that you are the shop owner and i am the shop manager trying to you know convince you that uh, you need to keep some kind of uh, discount or you need to uh, as a shop owner you need to purchase some uh, new kind of an item so if someone is purchasing a lot of scotch eggs then probably you need to stock more of it so more people will come to your shop so something like that so all these things you can you know try to come up with and finally we have to include the feature to stream the uh, outputs so streaming is one of the uh, one of my uh, viewers had requested this particular uh, option so i wanted to you know share how the streaming also happens and i'll be giving the code as well as how to you know do the streaming inside the html page and i will provide you the mechanisms also so this uh, is where the business logic and the code logic is going to end and uh, and now i am going to jump into the code explanation uh, so this video is going to i have kept, kept it as small as possible and i have tried to you know streamline the entire uh, presentation process so you can uh, go through this uh, video and then you can go to the code execute it and see or you can do the opposite you can try to execute the code first ensure that you are able to get the server up and running and you can see all these things uh, working in your system and you'll see all this kind of a background information that's get populated here also so everything that the server is seeing i am also logging in the back end i extensively use logging the python uh, logging module so all the things that is going through the server will be logged and you can also see it in your log files so let's go back to the presentation now we have understood all this stuff let's now look at the logic front end logic so we saw the front end logic right now so the names table the new customer gets uh, created it's pushed into the database then a new purchase request is uh, created and uh, the purchase item is pushed and we see the purchase item dead table and we see the llm interaction where the llm interaction is done with this or this uh, text box and then the output is shown to us which is not actually shown here but it will be shown to us and then it will be stored in the database and then we can reply the uh, reply this question as well as this answer using the streaming replies so this is what uh, is happening so this is just a recap fine so now we are going to enter into the code i can actually share you the code by reviewing the code separately by going to the code python files but i found that you know placing the code directly in this excalidra is much more intuitive and uh, i can easily explain to you by uh, looking at the various uh, blocks of code so i believe that you like this do leave a comment or uh, if you have any questions do leave a question i will try to provide you the feedback now comes the main area so uh, all these things as i already explained if you go back all this uh, buttons all this uh, text boxes forms and uh, how the things are you know getting populated here uh, all are only possible because there is a url pattern and uh, this url patterns are linked with the views this uh, also the views are linked with the database models so the main three files inside the django app are the url.py the django models.py and the views.py so these three are very important uh, files and i have just copied them uh, the main content of them into the excalidra presentation here so these are the various path that you are seeing here and uh, let me zoom in a bit you are seeing the various paths uh, the actual literal url path and these uh, functions that you see here will be explained to you in the next couple of minutes and this is the names of the path so these are the names of the path that you'll use in the index.html so after i explain the views i will explain to you the index.html and how it is getting populated scrolling down you will see that we have the models the database tables here so we have the customer with the name and card the customer has to be unique or else it will throw an error because it it will create a lot of issues so i had to make it as unique next the purchase this actually need not be unique because the items can be same items can be purchased by multiple customers so i don't want to keep it as unique and rest of the things i have kept it as simple as possible and one thing uh, the date time field starts with blank equal to true 
I tried other options. It actually creates a challenge. So I had made it as blank equal to true and default equal to date dot today. So I imported that here. Next is the questions. So in case of uh, questions, I am going to have the question, uh, question row, prompt row, answer row, and the time uh, stamp row, so a time stamp column. So sorry, it, these are all columns. And uh, this is how I have created the models. So these models will be integrating with the views next. Before we go forward, the OpenAI integration. So in case of the OpenAI integration, I'll be using using the OpenAI SDK. You have to do a pip install OpenAI. All the requirements. Uh, the all the library requirements will be shared along with the uh, repository itself so if you go to the repository here and you will see that that is requirements.txt this requirements has got all the necessary libraries that you need to install so all you need to do is pip install hyphen r requirements.txt this requirements.txt and it will install all of these libraries for you so you don't need to worry about that also let's proceed so here we are actually using a simple uh, python function which takes the user message it takes the system message and uh, the model used the model that i'm using is gpt 3.5 in this case and uh, i am uh, directly using this client that is open a sdk client along with the open a api key that is already loaded into the environment then i'm using this chat completion uh, endpoint and with these settings that you see here and i'm extracting the response so the final response is uh, returned as a dictionary containing a response key and assistant message as the output uh, here you see the user message this is where the complete prompt will be provided okay now i have explained to you the urls i explained to you the models and i have explained to you the open ai integration next what you are going to do is we are going to jump into individual views so this is going to take a bit of a time so let us proceed that's also going to show you a uh, easy way of uh, uh, following this particular video so get new names so when i when i want to get a new name if you go back here and if i click on this particular get new name customer i am getting this new customer name and the card the credit card details that is happening from this particular view so i am initiating a faker object and i am asking to give me a fake name and a fake credit card number both of these things initially i plan to create multiple fake names and cards then i realized that if i am going to push it to the uh, to the database it's going to be a little tedious so that's why i decided to limit it to single uh, data only and this user data that i am preparing here is sent to the front end using the context so that's how you see this update i'll be showing you the front end little later i just want to complete this uh, area first then you have the show names where it will actually uh, show the various customer objects that is already present in the database so this is the code that is doing it and uh, user db is the uh, key to which the customer list will be attached and you can enumerate this to get the output so when i click on show customers all the customers are getting shown here that is happening because of this particular view so how to push the customer name so whenever i am creating a new customer name i need to push it to the database right so it's a simple django view where i get the name object name and the card as a, a query parameter in the get request in the url itself so if you go back here and if i click on get new customer if you go to this particular uh, push name and just hover don't click on it just hover it you will see the update of the url here okay so you can see the update right now so cindy kalagar is going to be the name and the credit card number is going to be 502 it's very small but let me click enter you can see that the same gets updated here also so i am sending the uh, sending the get request through the url itself by modifying the url and it is getting populated here using the dictionary and i am saving it here and i am redirecting it uh, i am redirecting it to the so as you scroll down i am redirecting it to the uh, index itself by populating back all the data so that's how you see that once i click push item you will see all the customers so if i don't have this loop then you will not see anything so i don't want that way so that's why i populated the data deleting names is pretty simple you take go to the customers uh, tables get all the objects and delete it 
and uh, then you say names deleted so that's what you are seeing here so that's about how the customer names are tackled next comes the items so when it comes to items it's little bit more involved because you have to work with the customer who is going to purchase item so first of all you need to get the customer and the customer itself i am going to make it random so any customer can buy any item at any time uh, right so there is a lot of randomness involved so uh, so i had first of all in, uh, installed a food provider uh, module in faker and i just want to look at the faker dot dish so i just want to collect some dishes that the customers can purchase and the customer objects that is already stored in the database i am pulling that first out and i am creating a random way of you know selecting one of those customers so that's how this uh, this part actually selects one of those customers that is already in the database and then i am trying to get a uh, i am trying to get a uh, get the uh, fake items the price quantity etc so all these things are coming from random dot randint even the multiplication of those things are done in uh, this for loop and then i am creating the item data this item data i am actually showing it to the context also apart from showing it to the context i need to push it to the database right so if i click on this particular make new purchase so you see all this information is getting populated here and i need to click on this push item again this push item works through the query parameters so if i click on push item you will see the url changes here so the url contains all the information like the name item quantity price total spend and time stamp everything is pushed into the url itself so that's what if you scroll down that's what you will see in the push item so name item price quantity spend and ts so all these things are pushed and collected in the dictionary created as a row in the purchase table and it is saved and after that once that uh, thing is saved i am calling all the objects in the purchase table and i am populating it back so that's what is happening in this particular push item when it comes to show items also the same thing is happening uh, i am collecting all the i mean selecting all the rows in the purchase table and i am enumerating it and i am placing it in the items db so there is one kind of a difference that you will see when i am whenever i am showing the items it's called items db but when i whenever i am pushing the items i am actually giving it a different name so in this case i am placing it as items db only uh, but in case if you want to change it you can actually plan to change it so let's uh, yeah here you can see when i am uh, trying to get the name when i am only trying to get a single name i am actually making it as item data same way if you go here let me you know backtrack a bit if you go to the get new name you will see this user data but if you go to the show name or if you go to the push name it will be user db right so these kinds of naming conventions are very important when you are developing why because you need to keep track of uh, what kind of names you have provided in the back end so that you can place it in the front end so we will be seeing this in the action so as of now just stay tuned and uh, you know let us go with the flow so we have got the new item we have uh, shown the new item we have pushed the new item and finally we can delete the item so in order to delete the item it's going to be simply purchase objects dot all and delete so that's a simple process now comes the interesting part so how to show and delete the questions as we saw already the questions answers the prompts etc are getting populated automatically and the questions yes we are going to give it as a input in the text box in the form text box here but uh, the prompts are going to be created automatically and the replies are going to come from the uh, large language model so we are going to take the questions and we are going to uh, you know pack it and we are going to push it into the database but there is no a separate endpoint for that the pushing and saving of the questions prompts etc is happening in the another one view i'll be showing that here we are only showing the questions showing the questions is simply selecting the rows in the questions table and sending it to the quest db uh, uh, variable to the front end that is index.html and deleting is same as the other deletions that we did take all the questions objects and delete it when it comes to streaming replies this i want to you know uh, select and uh, discuss later so stay tuned for this let's proceed so we have two endpoints that we have to discuss that is one is olama endpoint another is open ai endpoint okay let's begin with 
olama endpoint when i start with the olama endpoint first thing that you will see that there is something called as eme template dot get template this template is going to look at sql analysis dot prompt right so let us actually look at this prompt in reality so what is this env template what is this get template method doing and what is this particular prompt doing so these three things we will have to review right now fine i am in the views uh, i am in the views uh, file views.py and you will see that at the top i have created the in the line 29 to 32 i have created the environment and the environment you will see that i have got some couple of weird classes file system loader select auto escape etc so these things comes from django jinja sorry this comes from jinja templating and here i am telling that load the templates from this particular folder that is stream django shop jinja prompt so this is where i want to load the templates and if you go to this particular folder that is jinja prompt you will see there is sql analysis dot prompt so if you open that prompt you will see that this is the this is the entire prompt so the prompt starts by analyze the below table of purchased items and answer there is a question that is inside the double brackets like this and if you scroll down there is a for loop that is running on the items db okay so this looks familiar right we are working on this items db elsewhere and each of the data in the items db is uh, looked by using the looked up using the name item quantity price total spend and purchase so this is how the jinja template takes all the data loops over the data and creates a text file so an or a text uh, text uh, value so this entire uh, process entire template will be used and along with the items db it will create a text string and that text string will be used as user prompt and it will be sent to the the open ai endpoint or olama endpoint so let's go back so you have seen that uh, you have seen that this environment actually you know loads uh, environment tells where the prompt files are and if you go back to the xcolor draw this um, let me zoom out a bit so this one the environment uh, template dot get template so this will tell which prompt to take so after you take this prompt uh, after you create this kind of a template this template you can populate it with this question and all this answers from the python script or from the view so let us go back so here we are actually you know getting all the uh, items and we are creating item list correct and then what you are going to do is we are going to get the query so we are going to do a get request on the query so this is the get form that you are seeing here this is the get form that you are seeing here will provide the query and uh, that query will be given as a question and the items db that we saw in the prompt sql analysis prompt will take items list the items list that you created here using the purchase objects so that's how the sql analysis prompt this prompt gets filled with the data and once it's filled filled with the data you will see that it becomes like this right so you have the analyze purchased items and the question comes here and then the table gets updated here so that's what you are seeing in the in the actual action fine so you have seen till here right but after that we are working on the olama client right now so this is a local client that i have it in my uh, in my lan and i have to use http you should not use https if you use https it will fail because it doesn't have ssl connection in, in mostly in your local lan so it will fail so don't keep this in mind it will say ssl version is wrong so the error will be little cryptic so if you see any error related ssl it's because of this particular link is wrong and uh, then you are going to use the client chat uh, chat method and you are going to send the sql analysis that you created here sql analysis this is the full prompt and uh, then you are asking the sql data analyst to provide the reply so basically if you go back so this is where i am you know creating a system prompt telling to the system that is the ai system that you are a uh, sql data analyst munching at huge volumes of data and you can think and give question, uh, given uh, question step by step and answer 
so and the answer is going to be in single line so all these things i am going to provide it and uh, then comes the reply that i am logging so you see the logging here you see the answer the reply is getting updated here so this is happening because i am logging here right and i am also throwing an exception in case if uh, there is a error forming in this particular uh, area of uh, connecting with the client or uh, chatting getting the method output then it will actually throw an error and it will uh, uh, it will move to the next area after that the questions uh, object is created it is saved to the database if the get request has some problem then it will bail out completely so it will say there was an error and uh, i will also tell that uh, the what is the issue and then i will push it to the database again so both of these things will get saved and it will be pushed so that's about ola my endpoint similar to this we will also work with uh, the open a endpoint the same things will happen so the templates will be created the items uh, database will be you know populated uh, the same kind of get request will be used and uh, the uh, the sql template prompt will get rendered with the text query and items list only difference is where you call so it will be a little different so we'll be using the llm call open ai uh, function that we introduced in, in the earlier uh, part of the video let me go there so you see one of the benefits of uh, working with uh, this uh, uh, excalibur is that you can immediately you know move between places very easily so if i if you go here this is where i introduced the llm call open ai function so this is the function that will get called with the user message system message and the model so and then it will go through this entire process and it will give the response so you can see the return is with the response right so the same response is what we are going to use here and i am actually directly taking this response so i am calling this open ai uh, the llm call open ai function and i am directly calling this response and i am attaching it to the reply and that reply i'm logging and i am creating the uh, questions object here saving it so if there is a error again if there is a error in calling this uh, question uh, open ai endpoint then it will error out telling that there was an ai client error if there is an open ai api key mistake or something like that it will get updated and uh, if there is a issue the get request then this kind of a uh, update will be given and it will be saved so we have actually you know looked at all the views right now so we have seen how the entire uh, you know views work we have seen how the uh, urls uh, patterns work based on the views and how the views are using the models that has been created in the models.py fine all is well but how the front end is getting populated and how most importantly streaming reply works so this is where the interesting part starts so streaming response is actually uh, you know pretty simple <laughs> initially i was also thinking little confusing when uh, the streaming response was happening so you need to create a separate view which actually takes a request and the view must actually contain the data that you are going to stream so it needs to already contain the data if you are going to get the data from somewhere that is fine so uh, you can actually get the views data or the Uh, st the replace data from another one particular endpoint you can populate it inside here as a first step so in this case i have you know created a prompt reply uh, string or a empty variable and to it i am attaching both the question and the answer that is present inside the questions table you can see that here so that's why when you click uh, click on the stream replies so let me click on home first and if i click on stream replies you will see the question is and the question gets updated that is going to be a br uh, tag here then the answer comes that is going to be a br tag and then the answer gets updated so this keeps on going uh, until the all the data uh, inside this uh, inside this prompt reply is completed fine so after you get the prompt reply you need to create an internal or nested function so this is a view stream reply view and inside this you need to create a gen or a function that is nested into it and you need to give the prompt reply that you created as the argument okay this is the definition keep this 
keep it in mind clearly this is a definition we are going to call this function below here so i'm going to give the prompt reply i'm going to uh, you know log the prompt reply this will be only logged once okay you can also verify that and yeah let me show you that so if you scroll down i had clicked the uh, clicked the stream replace and you saw that it had logged the entire uh, prompt so this is the entire question answer you can see all the list uh, all the entire string so this is done and then all the update is done later so it is still going on so that's why you are not seeing the output uh, yet so you can see that it's happening still okay once the uh, request is completed right then you will see such a line so you will see that once the request is completed you will see the line similar kind of a line and uh, i will show it to you after it's done fine so after the gen reply uh, gen reply function has been defined the prompt reply split and uh, inside the prompt reply once it is split on the uh, spaces i am going to create a kind of a generator so it's a for loop with the yield command the yield uh, uh, keyword here and this particular function i am going to call using the streaming http response so this is a very simple mechanics that you need to use but this is only part of the mechanics so the other part of the mechanics comes in the index.html that is the front end so let us now move to the front end so before we move to the front end you know let us you know do a brief recap so we have seen the logic we have seen how the front end the logic works we have seen the business logic uh, we have seen the url patterns we have seen the models we have seen various views now we are going to look at the index.html template so index.html template is here and uh, the index.template.html is going to be very confusing i'm going to be honest with you because i have created a single index.html and i have used it for every possible views that is there in this particular application how was this possible by using a very simple mechanism i always have this particular uh, um, let me zoom in a bit so i have a, a top level container and uh, in the index.html i have a top level container and uh, on the top level container i am going to have these kinds of extensions which is going to extend the base.html and the title and inside the container i am going to check what kind of data is coming from the view okay first of all i check it using the if statement like this and if that particular data has a has this key user data then i will start populating that particular div so that is how i have been able to create multiple uh, multiple views in a single template so you see i can populate the user data the moment i go and click here so you see that uh, okay now that it has completed i can actually show you this you can see that this particular response has been received so it is a 200 response get response and the response has been completed only after the response gets completed you will get this particular reply from the server right so this is a continuation sorry for you know moving back and forth but this is required let's go back to the index.html so now we have seen we are you know trying to understand how the index.html works and once you understand these things we can go and end by showing you how the streaming replies work so that is the objective of this so you can see that uh, the user data is first checked and if you go back and if you click on show customers so this is where the user data gets updated the moment i click this the show customers is going to send me the user data you can see that in the excalibur uh, if you go here and if you yeah you see this uh, yeah you see this user db so this one is going to be uh, taken up by the uh, front end and here you see the user data so this is what is actually getting prompt created when you click on get new customers so when i click on get new customers this is going to be user data when i click on show customers this is going to be user db same way when i'm going to click new purchase uh, item it is going to be items data and if i'm going to purchase show purchase customers list it is going to be items db so that's how the uh, the same template is going to work on different different views so if you go back to the templates 
you will see that that is user data and if you scroll down that is items data that i just now explained so if there is an items data then that gets populated further scroll, scroll down the same place if it is a user db this will get populated and if it is items db this will get populated so you can see all of these things have been you know done at the top level so that is top of the page so that is how i have been able to get all of the information at the top so let us you know uh, try to uh, bring this all together so that you guys can see what is happening so you can see the item you can see the user data item data follow that user db items db right and then comes the status so whenever uh, whenever the items db or the user db is getting uh, deleted then the status gets updated so you can see that also in the excalibur so if you go down and if you look at the delete names you will see that the context has status so this status is what gets pushed to the front end so you can go to the delete items you will see the context as item status so this is what you see here right and uh, that is how i am able to push uh, same uh, into the same uh, index.html various views data fine so you have seen all of these things right and let me actually you know close this and close this out also so you can see the item if status if item status both of these things you are seeing and now comes the interesting part where you are going to use the buttons so we have lot of urls a uh, lot of views that you have created and the views are connected to the urls but you need to call those views and for that you need to have the links and to have the links we have created these buttons and this is where i am you know calling each of the views the get new name the show name the del name so all of these things are coming from this area and following that you have get new item show item and delete item so that is following that and then comes the llm interaction so llm interaction that you see here so let us you know click on home so you will see the llm interaction here that has two forms so both of the forms are getting created here so if you click you you can see that form 1 that is uh, using the get llm which is going to connect with the uh, open ai and then you will have get ol llm which is going to connect with olama backend so both of these things you can see and most important thing is the name so here i am saying text q1 so this will go to the olama and text q2 this will go to the uh, sorry text q1 will go to the open ai and text q2 will go to olama how is this uh, being done when i am going to call the uh, click the submit button the submit button will immediately look for the name that is text q2 and it will attach it to the get method and it will send it to the server so that is how the form works so you need to ensure that you have a input type with the name text q2 and you need to use the form with the button class of type submit so that is how you have to create a form and that is what i have done so all these things i have you know tried to pack it into a single page so once i click that it will actually go to the olama or the open ai endpoints and get the respective answer after it gets the answer it has to fill that answer somewhere right so in order to fill the answer it will be done at the bottom so you have the questions table where i can show the questions and delete the questions so that is the same like how we did at the top for the items and once we have the prompt reply then we can actually get the uh, prompt to be uh, placed along with the answer so that's what you are seeing here so the prompt that we gave to the large language model here here the same thing and also the reply that you are getting from the uh, large language model we are going to catch it here so if you go to the excalibur and if you go to the endpoints you will see both of these things present let me go to the endpoint so you will see the prompt and the reply so let me zoom out so you will see the get olama llm and get llm so both of these things you will see that i am rendering the prompt reply you can see that prompt and reply correct the same thing gets updated in this area in the reply here and in the prompt here and both of the time it actually checks whether there is a prompt uh, variable getting uh, pushed to the uh, pushed to the template it will check that first and then it will populate it and finally once you click the uh, show questions the questions will be updated populated at the bottom so that's what you are saying
fine so we have you know uh, come to a, come to almost to the end of uh, the discussion where you guys must be waiting how the streaming replies work streaming response and replies work right just a second so the streaming reply that you saw here will need a appropriate request the streaming response sorry the response must be uh, asked by a request and this request has to be continuous it has to uh, be routinely sent to the server and it has to ask for the further response from the uh, server so for this we have to write a script in the index.html so if you scroll down further you will see there is a div called as stream and you can see a heading called a streaming output and below that you will see a script so this script is actually having fetch streaming content function this function will use the xml http request uh, object and this object will do the work for us so this object has the necessary uh, attributes that can uh, connect with the url that is a streaming reply url which will connect with the uh, with this view so if you scroll down the view that we saw in here so it will connect to this view streaming reply view i will uh, show you the output here so if you move to the urls so you can see the streaming reply is linked with the streaming reply uh, function so the view will this particular uh, xml http request will connect to this particular url and it will start sending the request and it will keep on sending the request and get the response and that response will be updated in this uh, using this particular uh, method so in the document in the javascript uh, it will uh, look at the html document that is a page that is index.html page it will try to search for this uh, element with stream so if you scroll up this is the element and inside that element the inner html is going to be modified and the xhr.response text is going to be placed there so that is how whenever i am going to click on streaming replies you will see that it is getting pasted like this so this area you will see if you go back it is this particular div so how to find it out very simple go to inspect and you'll see that in the inspect you will see that it is getting updated so you can see that here it's getting continuously updated correct so this is happening uh, you know live so you you are seeing that happening as as it is getting updated here you can see that happening here also and this is you know one of the fascinating ways of understanding both the front end and the back end and to understand how the streaming replies also work uh, and in the meantime if you go here you will see that uh, the server is still waiting the such such output has not been provided so it, it's not yet completed so this is what is happening here this is how the streaming reply and uh, streaming uh, request and response works fine so let us go back let us you know scroll down further so you saw how this is working and this is where xhr.open is where the request is actually sent so the the asynchronous get request is sent to the view and uh, the okay here the the request is created and the request is sent here and then uh, this is the function end so here the function ends right this function has to be called so when is this function going to be called in order to call this function i am going to use a button and uh, that button is going to be given a streamer id and that whenever i click that button the uh, function this uh, fetch streaming content function will get called so that is what is happening so if you go back here this streaming replies will have the id uh, streamer so if you go up you will see that this id the button class has id streamer so you guys have to uh, you know look at this uh, in the working rather than looking at the video so in the video this might be looking very small but if you uh, you know execute this cell and execute this server and look at the outputs then you will understand it very clearly and uh, moreover in this case i am um, shared the entire uh, uh, server uh, database also so if you go back now if you click on home what will happen is this entire streaming output will, output will get vanished because there is uh, in the home view i have no output given so in the home view only this kind of uh, template is present so that's why you see that entire uh, things gets vanished 
and if you go to the django project and streaming django you will see that in the shop uh, just a minute i think i had provided the okay i will update the database also so that you can you guys can uh, directly use the existing database that i have already populated so in that way what will happen is even even if you don't have the connectivity with the openai api key you can still experiment with the streaming uh, reply so because the the questions and answers are already populated in the uh, in the table uh, let us go here so the questions and answers are populated already in the database that i'm going to share so that will be shared in this location uh, you can use that directly when the server is getting uh, started up so when you are going to uh, run the uh, server so when you are going to run the server there is one point i want you guys to keep in mind i am going to cut this i mean stop the server right now when you install this uh, server in your local environment you will actually do something called as manage.py and you will click on migrate you will do this migrate do not do this if you do migrate then the database will get erased completely so don't do that uh, by default uh, when you download this particular uh, folder you will see that uh, it has this db.sqlite3 and you can use this db.sqlite3 without actually running the migrate so it will be there already so you can try that out if you have any questions you can let me know let's go back to the uh, discussion so right now uh, it's a time to recap so we have seen uh, if from the starting point where we started uh, the demo we looked at the demo aspect and we saw how we can uh, uh, try to reduce the uh, how to connect the front end the back end just a second so we started with the uh, idea of you know creating an ai shop and uh, we went through the demo process we saw what are the steps that were taken and the business logic we went through the entire business logic first and uh, we saw how the business logic uh, actually takes the customer as well as the items that he purchased and how the shop manager and the owner might want to use the ai endpoints we saw that and uh, we went through the front end flow we actually saw that in the demo also then we went through each and every parts of the django application so the url patterns the database models then we went through each and every views that is present in the uh, application we reviewed that and finally we re we reviewed the index.html the entire file and how this single file is uh, used for uh, you know updating the page for all the views so we saw that also and finally we looked at how the streaming response streaming response http response and the streaming request xml http request works so we reviewed both of these things and uh, by now you must have got a very uh, good overview on how you can actually write uh, ai related applications using django and bootstrap and uh, most important point that you would have i would want you to take us to understand the business logic so once you know the business logic once you know these four steps and uh, once you decide okay this is how i want the shop owner i want the manager uh, the customer to interact then you can actually come up with all the necessary blue boxes once you are having the ideas on the necessary blue boxes then you can populate all these things so populating the code will not take a lot of time writing the code might take maximum 3 to 4 hours but coming up with the you know the the business logic maybe you may not even come up with the business logic business logic will be given to you by someone so once you get the business logic you know the next major challenge you will face is in uh, you know getting this layout so this is one of the challenges you will face if you are new to front end and back end stack but i would suggest that uh, you know just go don't get frustrated with the front end that much you can see that here even my own uh, uh, buttons are not aligned if it is not aligned it's fine when you are doing an mvp uh, all you need to do is ensure that the actions and the logics are working properly so just learn bootstrap to a level that you can you know populate a good uh, template and then your concentration should be mainly on how to get the jinja templates work for uh, populating the data uh, to the front end like this so that we saw a couple of minutes back and uh, second thing that you will have to be very 
comfortable is with uh, creating connection with the uh, the endpoints like uh, llm uh, open ai and as well as with olama olama i did not actually touch right now uh, you guys can let me know i have already shown you how the olama you can uh, client you can connect using the uh, view it's a very straightforward process there is a separate video where i discuss about the olama server setup and connecting to olama using the olama client so if you guys can take a look at that this will be pretty straightforward when it comes to local llms or remote llms that is not much of a difference both of these llms are sitting somewhere in a django or a you know backend server which is running fast api or some other api and you are connecting to it and getting the response so that's uh, it is that simple but you cannot actually load the model in your django app do not try that your app will become very very slow the llm loading the model loading should be done in a separate server and you need to connect to that server using the api like how we are doing here so you are connecting to that server using this open ai client and you are chatting with that you should do that only you should not load the model locally meaning locally inside this views inside this views if you try to load the model using any of the transformers or any of the olama uh, in olama client setup then it's going to fail so do not try that you need to have a separate uh, instance that is running the server and you need to connect it to that server using the this kind of a client that if you scroll down you can see that in case of uh, uh, get llm you will see that i am connecting through llm call and in case of get ol llm you will see that i am connecting through this client so that is how you should uh, you should connect and we saw all these things and then we also saw how the streaming uh, quest, uh, response and the request works and uh, finally we reviewed the entire index.html file so i believe that in this uh, discussion you have got some uh, you know proper overview on uh, how the things are working and uh, with uh, that said if you like this video do leave a like share the comments in the comment section and also uh, do subscribe to my channel for further updates on similar kind of uh, videos and most important point i wanted to highlight is that the support that has been provided by various uh, uh, open source community as well as open source models has you know helped me a lot in uh, making these videos so do support them and also uh, second point is that do a lot of warm up i was able to come up with all this business logic and uh, connecting the business logic with the code easily in less than one and a half days it is because i did a lot of warm up in django i did a lot of warm up with uh, the olama and open ai sdks that's when you will get confidence that how the input goes in and how the output comes out so all these things you have to you know try to recap and uh, try to work on that so finally i would like to leave this video with four words that is practice warm up practice warm up see you guys have a great time